because there's a federal ban on gun possession by marijuana consumers challenged in federal court of appeals arguments, you guys. Yeah, pow, pow, pow. Lawyers in a federal appeals, appeals court faced off this week over when the government may lawfully disarm someone for using marijuana, with the Department of DOJ arguing that merely a person's recent use of the drug is sufficient to establish that they're in violation of the law and should not legally be able to possess a gun. Judges on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit, however, pushed back on the government's position, noting an oral argument on Tuesday that recently published opinion within the same judicial court held that while some limits on a presently intoxicated person's right to carry a weapon may be constitutional, disarming, disarming a sober person based on past substance usage is not. The arguments came as three Judge Fifth Circuit panel reconsiders the case of U.S. versus Daniels, which earlier this year was set to be considered by the U.S. Supreme Court, but was among a number of firearms related cases uh, remanded back to lower courts following a separate ruling about firearms and domestic violence. A Fifth Circuit panel previously ruled in favor of the individual in the case who faced a conviction after admitting to having used cannabis while in possession of a gun. The court said the federal uh, statute known as Section 922G3, which prevents someone from unlawfully user of an illegal drug before buying or possessing firearms, was unconstitutional. Central to Tuesday's oral arguments were questions of whether the other Fifth Circuit opinion about gun ownership by marijuana users, known as U.S. versus Connolly, was binding on the appellate attorney. Attorney Jonathan D. Bruckner, representing the federal government, said he felt the court should revisit Connolly. Buckner said that even if Connolly is the new Fifth Circuit standard for when the federal position on gun ownership by marijuana users yeah. is unconstitutional. That doesn't mean that cannabis use has to occur at the same time a person is holding a firearm. In a quote, I read Conley as allowing for a conviction to occur if someone is engaged in that use, even if it's not at the uh, contemptuous time that they possess the firearm, he told the panel. If you want to own a gun, quit using drugs. Judges noted that the Conley rule talks about a very tight temp, uh, temporal nexus between marijuana use and firearm possession and says it's really hard for me to think you can reconcile Conley with this week's earlier ruling, one said. Buckner responded to that, uh, but rewind this a little bit or slow this down a little bit. Thank you. Buckner responded that he recognized Conley and requires a closer temporal use, but he argued that convincing the defendant of unlawful firearm ownership should be warranted, or I can show that he is still a user, they say. Lawyers for Daniels, meanwhile, told the court that the government is merely seeking to expand its ability to restrict gun ownership by people who use or have used marijuana, you guys. And in a quote, they're saying, as I was listening to opposing counsel, Kimberly G. Gore, who argued on Daniel's behalf on Tuesday, told judges during rebuttal that in quotes, the only thing that kept running through my head was that the government is looking for a way to broaden the scope of its ability to restrict a fundamental right. In an additional quote, he kept referring to active user, she said, but that's not the standard. The standard under Conley and the standard you set in the intentional Daniels decision was active intoxication. Mm, I, man, Dale, I can't wait to hear what you have to say about this. In Connolly, the court ruled that the government failed to demonstrate that lawful restrictions on gun ownership by domestic abusers or the mentally ill were sufficiently similar to its law against firearm possession by drug users, you guys. And in a quote, laws designed to disarm the severe mentally ill do not justify depriving those of sound mind of their Second Amendment rights. Judges in that case wrote, and they also wrote, the analogy stands only if someone is so intoxicated as to be in a state of complete lunacy, end quote. Judges on Tuesday uh, seem skeptical of Gore's argument that her client's conviction should be simply thrown out as the result of the Connolly case, and they suggested instead that the case might be remanded to a district court and retired, potentially giving prosecutors a chance to argue that Daniels was actively using marijuana at the time, at the time he possessed the gun, you guys. Mm-hmm.
Gore protested uh, that officers simply smelling marijuana at the time of Daniel's arrest doesn't demonstrate active use. And in a quote, they're saying, you could smell old cigarettes, she told the court. Oh, that's an interesting argument. In an additional quote, that's a good closing argument to be used at a, at a retrial, one of the judges replied. Man, oh man, this is going to get good, Dale. The Fifth Circuit panel consisted of Judges Edwin Smith, Stephen A. Uh, Higginson, and Don Willowit, and they took the matter under submission and did not indicate when to expect a ruling, you guys. Man, oh man, oh man, this goes on and on and on. You'll be able to read this rest of the story over on our website. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about this. Historically speaking, I don't think this... The Supreme Court is going to allow this for very long. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we've got a couple of cases in the last few years, the Bruin and the Rahimi case, where they took a look back to 1791 when the Second Amendment was enacted to see how was use of a substance dealt with when it came to your right to keep and bear arms. Mm -hmm. And if that's the standard we're going to use, and someone just smelling weed or someone who have used weed in the past is not actively intoxicated and not trustworthy to have a gun, mm -hmm. I think they're in trouble trying to criminalize this. Yeah, and you know what, Dale? This is basically the same argument uh, in, in the other case that we covered uh, that was here about the uh, about the uh, conceal, right. conceal, conceal, no, the conceal and carry uh, permit license that we covered here uh, on, on the show. Um when when the, the basically this argument was made and uh and they were they ended up winning the ability to be able to apply for their concealed and carry and that was right here in california well the second amendment's relatively clear the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed mm -hmm. now if that's where you start and uh, if the court's going to make you look historically and a lot of these attempts by the government to keep you from uh from bearing arms through drug use are just not going to stand up to scrutiny. Mm -hmm. And this may have to go back to the trial court to have more evidence taken to see if they can prove or disprove the person was actively intoxicated and therefore not trustworthy. Because historically, if you're drunker than Hogan's goat and you're out in the street shooting your guns off, someone's going to take them away from you and give them back to you when you Eek. sober up. Mm -hmm. That's historically how it was done. They don't take away your gun rights because you get drunk. Um, they give them back to you when you're sober. Mm-hmm. We're going to wait and see, because the Supreme Court has now made a couple of clear statements. We're going to look historically at how it was handled, not how it was handled since the Controlled Substances Act was passed. No, mm -hmm. they're going to go back a lot further than that. So this is going to be interesting to watch um, as it gets ferreted out and goes back up to the Supreme Court if necessary. Dale, I, well, I, I mean, I'll go ahead, Jenny. I mean, constitutional law, equal protection under the Constitution of the United States of America. Anyone like this is Dale is absolutely right. And I'm really excited to see how this rolls out, because, I mean, you can't. I, I don't know. I'm just two way gets me all pissed off because I would like to be able to defend myself. And I don't want just the terrible people to have guns. Right. And, and yes, they're shitty people. I would rather you make sure that people who are absolutely insane or bipolar and off their meds don't have guns. If you have a lithium prescription maybe not a gun, you know, mm -hmm. something like that is a lot more feasible than if you've ever used cannabis, you can no longer protect yourself. Yeah. Uh, you know, Dale, I, I wonder, I wonder if they're going to have to switch up their whole way for how they, how they deny people their two way rights. And I think ultimately this is probably going to come to, um, if, if you, uh, are caught, uh, you know, uh, firing off a, a gun in some type of way or use a gun in some type of crime and you test positive for weed, then they'll probably will, will ban. I think that's where this is probably going to end up at. Well, I think they should, if you get, if you're caught using a gun for a crime, you shouldn't be able to own a gun. Like if you're shooting up a convenience store, yeah, that's a good reason to say, Hey, Joe Blow doesn't need a fucking I, gun anymore. I, I, I agree with that. I'm just I'm just saying I don't I, think, I don't I think really care if he smoked a joint seventy two hours prior. Like that's the whole problem that we have and that's why we continue with this prohibitionist rhetoric is because just because cannabis is somewhere in the equation does not make it a causation. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a there's a bigger problem with just giving someone a felony because historically when you walked out of prison they gave you your guns back. OK, so we have if, if you're a violent felon, OK, I, I, I don't have a problem if you've been used uh, convicted of violence. But, you know, I have a weed felony. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've smacked a few people in the mouth before, but I've never knocked off a liquor store. 
Okay. So why should I not be able to, to keep and bear arms because I had a marijuana felony? Damn. It, historically, they didn't do it that way. Are you oh, say, are you I think saying... there's a lot of these drug pro, I mean, these uh, gun prohibition attempts that are going to fall flat on their face over the next few years. Dale, are you saying that you pistol whipped a couple of people in your past? No, he said he slapped oh, but people. I smacked a couple of motherfuckers in the mouth. Okay. I've been All smacked right. in the mouth too. So let All me right. just. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, just damn. Sure to clarify. With a five finger say to the face, motherfucker. Oh, boy. Dale Take said, that, talk boy. to me nice, Jason Beck. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jason did the whole I, head I, mm -hmm. I, I'm I, I'm pro idiot slapping I agree <laughs> Fair enough. I mean yeah I wish they would give guns like back unfortunately they melted idiot. mine you have a, what do you have to say about this Rochelle not paying attention anymore 